Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture series of mobile application development. In our previous session, we have seen that how the fragment works, how the fragment interacts with each other, how can you add the fragment, how to remove and replace the fragment. So now, in today's lecture, we are going to learn a new component that is known as intent. How the intent works and what are the usage of the intent. As well as, we'll talk about that is the intent used in a real time or what are the real time application of the intent. Students, do not worry. We are going to talk about intent in detail in this lecture. So let's begin with the today's lecture. Students, what do we mean by the intent? So intent is used to pass a message from the one component to another. That means intent is a message. Intent itself as a message that is passed between two components. So when we talk about the components, what are the components are there? Components like activity, services, broadcast receiver, content provider, anything. Fine. So these all are known as the components. So whenever you try to pass a message from the one activity to another activity or one service to another service, or I can say to send a message throughout the broadcast, or we can say to send a message through the content provider, we need intent. So here the intent are the objects which are used in the Android for the passing the information among the activities in application from one app to another app or inner app as well. Now, what about the intent other things? So intents are also used for the communicating between the application components. Next, so what is the real time example for the intent? Students, have you ever seen like whenever you try to do a payment or try to do a payment from the Paytm, it may generate a link over there, okay, and you get SMS link for the payment. Or when we try to register in any workshops or webinar, what happens? They send one message, an SMS to you. By clicking on the particular link, you redirect your Paytm application or PhonePay application or Google Pay application. So what is this? Right now, you are in SMS application, right? Now, with that particular link given in the SMS, when you click over over that, you may be directed to the Paytm link, GPay link or any other payment application link. So you are moving from one application to another application. At the time you are just passing the data from one app to another app. What is this? Does this happen with the usage of intent? Now next example. See, uh, many of us when we ask about the Google Map locations, we usually forward it through the SMS or the WhatsApp application. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the WhatsApp only right now. So how the intent works in the WhatsApp. Okay, so let's see. If you ask me, sir, what is the location? I'm just sending you the location. Okay, current location or live location over there on the WhatsApp. So you just need to send the exact location to the WhatsApp. Now when you click on the location button icon, it will redirect it to the map application. So what is happening over here? You are currently on the WhatsApp, right? So yeah, from the WhatsApp, you're just moving from WhatsApp to the map. Okay, so the both applications are different. You are communicating between these two applications. You are moving from one app to another application. This is happening with the usage of impact. Okay, so let me show you. So if you will jump from one app to another app, searching for a location or click on the link and you redirect your browser. Okay. So this all thing happens with the help of intent. So see, this is a particular demo payment. When you click on this particular pay link, you may redirect your application. When you click on particular, the, this is another demo for the map. When you click on the map button, you may redirect to the particular map location. These are the real time examples of the intent because you can do this with the help of intent only. Next. So why the intents are used for? So intents used to start the service, start the activity, sending user to another application, getting result from the activity, allowing apps to start activity, dial a call. You can say like take a user to the camera to take a picture or URL from the browser, then broadcast a message, display the list of contact, 
is all things can be done with the help of intents right so many times you may found that when i do a number on a whatsapp okay then you just need to click on the particular the number is highlighted with a blue color right students the number is highlighted with a blue color now at the time you just need to click on the enter button or click on the particular number and it is automatically shown on the dialer phone so this is done by the intent next intent mainly used for the first in the activity uh, whenever you start try to start a new activity you need to pass an intent object and call a start activity method okay next when you want to start a services and with some data you may use the intent over there for the broadcast receiver the intent are used to send a broadcast message into the android system structure of the intent now what the intent has see intent has two important parts students number one is the action action that means what you want to do you want to edit you want to go in the main you want to view some data you want to call you want to dial something like that and second one is the data always the action contains some data whatever you want to perform and what data you want to send from one app to another app while performing the particular action these two things are so much necessary fine so now let me show about the action so the example of the action students will talk about the example of the action so it contains like action underscore view content context slash people slash one what happens with this students this displays the information about the person whose identifier is one fine so whenever you pass this as data you may able to find out or you may able to view the data whose id is one now dial when you talk about the dial it will display the phone dialer with the person filled in next when you talk about the tell one two three the phone dialer with the given number you may able to see when you talk about the dial one two three the display the phone dialer with the given number with the filled particular data fine next edit so when you try to edit some contact the action is like action underscore edit content is context slash people one fine so such like this you can able to perform the actions next students uh, it's all about the action view action view display the list of the people so here we have what we have written we have written like content we need to show the content from the context of the people so context people will be shown so this is the action this is the data we have so when you talk about the secondary attribute in addition with the content uh, sorry in addition with the action and the data we have the secondary attributes like category you may able to find the category as a launcher category of any activity just check out your android manifest.xml file over there students the intent intent filters are there you are able to find out the actions like in category underscore launcher what that shows that shows that this activity is a launcher activity when you click on any application button this uh, activity is runs first now the type then we call about the components then we call about the extras you may also specify the extras components and the type with the help of the intent now types of the intent students intents are the two different types of the intents are there number one is implicit intent that means that doesn't specify the component okay in such cases the intent provides the information on available components provided by the system that means here you need you, if you do not want to specify the component the itself the system will suggest the component in the system will run so with the following code you can view the web page this is the example of the implicit intent you can create intent object like intent intent object new intent then intent dot action dot view you need to specify the actions what you want to perform then with the action students you need to bind your data so here two different ways are there you can directly bind your data by uh, applying the comma over here and after that you just need to append the data again another method is you just need to call a set data method and parse the URI dot parse ljku dot edu dot in this code and after that do not forget to start the intent like the start activity intent object start activity that is used to start the activity with the data that contains in the intent object data and action both okay so intent object contains data and action both 
are combined together in the intent object and then activity will start perform next explicit object here students you need to specify that what component you want to use okay so the explicit intent works internally within the application to perform the navigation or the data transfer from one app to another application so how to navigate from one app activity to another activity let's see you just have to try to create an intent object like intent intent new intent then it is specified in get application context students get application context called this method i can say like uh, it will suggest you whatever the java file you are there currently this uh, the whatever the java file in which you are writing this particular code that is your context okay comma second activity dot class remember here you need to specify dot class attribute please do not write dot java over there then this is to write down the start activity in there so let's see the program for that but how the program works let me show you our output will be like this we just need to uh, write down over here something url over here press on a click here button okay and then our web page will run okay next so this is our first implicit explicit intent screen program screen what we have we have the edit text button this is the edit text then the button 1 and button 2 when we click on the button 1 click here we redirect to call implicit intent see i am going to show the implicit explicit example both together in a single program okay so please just focus over here see the next program is output for the explicit intent what we have is when we just click on the go send second button the second activity will run and it also contains the go to first button the we again get back to the first activity so this is the explicit intent because we move from one activity to another activity so now how we can do this let's see with the help of program so students what we have let me show you i just created a linear layout over here okay its orientation is vertical then i just took one edit text button id is edit text data uh, margin top is 100 dp margin left is 20 dp let me split the design and the code part okay so this is a design part see this is our edit text button this is our coding part next i am going to take a button over there so button on the button i have written like click here the button id is implicit button width and height is wrap content wrap content from the margin i took from the top is 120 and the margin left is 50 when you talk about the button so another button is there for the explicit okay so for explicit i just take a button write down over that i click to go second and id is explicit button now on the other end what about the main activity dot java file so this is our main activity dot java file what we have students we have the two buttons and one edit text so what we need to do we just need to bind our buttons from the java file to xml file so for that we just need to take the implicit button explicit button and the edit text so we just create the three objects over there two for the buttons one for the edit text and mapping these two buttons and the edit text with our xml file so how to do see here it is created one uh, object like url text that is our edit text and map with any text data implicit button explicit button map with both of them and then you here you need to apply your on click event see first we are going to see the implicit then explicit so here it is implicit button over there set on click listener new view on click listener on click button first whatever the string you have passed you just to get that so how to get first text view dot get text see when you try to click on a text view dot get text or i can say edit text dot get text it returns an object you need to convert that particular object into the string okay So I am just calling the two string method. Convert it into string, then pass intent, intent, new, intent, intent dot action view. What do you want to perform? You just want to view the website. That's why click on the action view. And what do you want to see? Pass the data. That is URI dot parse URL. Fine. So here it is. Let me just okay. Then start the activity in there. So this code. From this code, you are able to see the website. Now, what about the explicit? See, this is the second activity of Java file students. Okay, so whenever you click on the particular second activity of Java, 
here we have second activity dot java first we just need to uh, okay just wait a minute let me show first activity main dot java file so when you try to click on the explicit button you need to redirect to the second activity class so just write down the get application context this is the explicit button dot set on click listener on click event method intent intent new intent get application context comma second activity dot class this second activity dot class represent this particular second activity dot java file then you just need to write set start activity so when you will try to click on the button it will redirect to the second activity fine so here i have also created a second activity dot xml file that contains only one text view that this is the second activity and one button because i want to again get back to the first activity with the help of second button so here the button name is second button for this particular event i just implement over here explicitly like this see take a button find view by id second button then set on click listener intent intent new intent get application context see this is your source this is your destination where you want to go you want to go to the main activities on the second activity so always try to write like main activity dot class and start activity intent so this is how students you can perform the explicit and implicit intent now let me run this program and show you how it works so let me just uh, run this particular program and show you how it works it will take some amount of time to build the gradle and the application will be installed soon so here it is my application is start the installation so launching the activity so here it, it is our activity students you can see fine so this is our edit text let me just write down like uh, https colon slash slash and also students do not forget to write down https colon slash slash okay www.google.google.com okay and click on the submit button so when you click over here okay it may ask you the default browser so default browser is my vivo phone that's why it's a vivo browser and google.com will open over here fine so now so this is your students google screen will be opened up when you click on the particular application button so again get back to the application here we have the application so now what to do when you click on the go to second see when you click on the click to go second your you move from the one activity to the second activity okay so this is the explicit this is all about the explicit intent so let me just click on the click to go second button see this is my second activity so I move from first activity to second activity or I can say I navigate from the first activity to second activity by clicking on the button. This is the example of the explicit intent. So again click on the second activity, go to second, this is go to first. So such like this students, you can implement implicit and explicit intent. So students, today in the session we talk about the intent, how the intent works. In the next session, we will see another program for the implicit and explicit event time. So, we will get the better idea to implement the intents in the Android. Till that, if you have any doubt, then please feel free to ask me. Thank you so much.